Welcome to our 9 o'clock service today. Uh, so those of you who haven't met, I'm Alison Miller and I'm going to be your service leader today. Uh, so we're going to start off with a psalm. So today, unfortunately, we're having some problems with the technology, so Gerard's going to be in control of the slide. So he's doing lots of things, so it's going to be a bit tricky. So if there's a bit of a delay with the slides, we, we apologise. So today we're going to do Psalm 113, 1 to 3. Uh, so I'll read it to you. Uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you his servants. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. 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 Now we have a song. <laughs>
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. So we know that this is Jesus who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Now, I have a whole PowerPoint organised for you on conception from the medical point of view. <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. Okay, Peter, do you want to come down? <laughs> so, um, I was thinking about this. We were actually talking about um, we were actually talking about this at, Bible, at um, choir practice the other night. Yes. Coincidentally, I didn't know this, but this was going to happen. And we were talking about how Mary must have felt um, when she was told that the Holy Spirit was going to come and um, make her pregnant. And nowhere in the Bible does it talk about Mary's parents um, and how she must have felt as a young, like 14, 15 year old girl, who she had to talk to and how she must have felt being told that she was going to, I mean, back then they wouldn't have known how you got pregnant, I don't think, no one would have told them about the birds and the bees. I would like to take dispute with that statement, I reckon, Do you? I reckon they would have figured it out by then. <laughs> I don't know, if you were, uh, I don't know. I that, that would have been something that they, they discussed really. Anyway, whether she had the birds and the bees talk and whether she knew how it was going to happen. And I've been thinking about it. And uh, that's, I have a list of questions that I'm going to ask God when I get to heaven. And this is going to be one of the questions. How, is this the first case of IVF? Or how? how anyway, it's, 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 I've been thinking about it. But it's, it's fascinating. Anyway, um, that's just the mechanics of it. Yeah. But one of the things that um, um, Mary was just so accepting when she was told that the Holy Spirit would come to you, and um, and she said, "Yes, I'm happy for that to happen." And the other thing that I thought was really interesting was that it was the Holy Spirit that that Jesus was conceived by, and then when he left Earth and went to heaven. The Holy Spirit was what was left. So he started with the Holy Spirit and then he left. He sent the Holy Spirit. Yeah. He sent the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So it was the beginning and the end yeah. of Jesus. Yeah. Well, I don't have much to add to um, <laughs> <laughs> um, other than to say that next week we look at, I guess, the humanity part of how Jesus came into the world. But this line emphasizes his divinity um, and emphasizes. Um, the Lord's involvement, God's involvement, um, and the way that He brought Jesus into the world through His Spirit. Yeah, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. We're thinking about it a lot. Anyway, so after I've all that, how did you do it? Okay, we now have the call to confession. All right, so let's all read this together. Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have gone our own way and rejected your will for our lives. We are sorry for our sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your Son who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you and to please you in every way. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
prayer as we hear God's word. Heavenly Father, give us faith to receive your word, understanding to know what it means, and the will to put it into practice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so our reading today is from Daniel chapter 3. It's a rather long chapter. So Jason has taken the liberty of um, getting me to highlight the key parts of, of the chapter. And if you want to keep me honest, feel free to follow along in your Bibles and read all over the little verses that I skip along the way, incidental details. Daniel, Daniel chapter 3, starting from verse 1. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold, 60 cubits high and 6 cubits wide, and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. He then summoned the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all other provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. Down to verse 4. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, Nations and people of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. And down to verse 12. But there are some Jews who have you set over the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty, so they dobbed in. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up. Or good moment, down to verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, Your Majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into a blazing furnace. Down to verse 24. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leapt to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't the three men that we tied up, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unarmed, and the fourth looks like the son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the most high God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their head singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any gods except their own God. Therefore I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble. For no other god can save in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Thanks, Pete. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Isn't it great to get together and sing all together, hear this echo out around this room? I will trust in you and, sit and do this all together as a group. You know, we follow Jesus through the week on all our different adventures, but it's great to stand up and sing out loud like, and do this all together. And I will trust in the Lord. So thank you, Ben, for helping us to worship and to praise. It's wonderful, isn't it? 
and as we think about doing things together, it's great to serve together as well. And on Friday night, we have Fun Food Friday, and it's awesome to see like people serving in this community to bless. So we had uh, Anne, who's Anne? Oh, she's got, oh, okay, okay, she's out. Anne and Rosie got food, provided the food on Fun Food Friday this last week. And over 35 students were there and they keep gathering, they keep coming. And as, as we were standing around getting ready, this young student came, came and she goes, what are you doing here? What's happening? And I, I just shared a bit about who we are and what we're there for. And she said, what would I do to find out about Christianity? <laughs> <laughs> just from Bangladesh, completely different country, completely different culture. What would I do to find out about Jesus? And I said, as being a female, I said, oh, you should go and talk to that lady over there. And <laughs> she talked to Paula. And she started to share about how when she's looking at her religion and she sees inconsistencies in it. She just started to notice these inconsistencies. And she also said she sees leaders saying things that are not even in their scriptures. And she's, so she's like, I want to find out. And so she's meeting up with Paula and Beck and the whole group learning about Jesus next Friday, so praise the Lord, isn't that great? So wonderful to sing and praise God together, wonderful to serve together, thanks Rosie, and, and as well, yeah, to do this as a whole church, and to see people at work in people's lives. Now this is an uh, intense chapter we've got this this day. Now, when we came, the aircon wasn't working, we, we could have let it be hot, like to go to the theme of the furnace, but Pete, Pete's got the aircon on for us, so that's <laughs> I'm going to pray for us and we'll look into this passage. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we can all together praise you because you are amazing. And Lord, we do trust you. We trust you and we worship you. We thank you for this time. We thank you for the way that you work across the church all each day through, through all the different gatherings. And yeah, we thank you for this uh, young lady seeking after you. We pray that you work in her heart and save her, Lord. And Lord, we pray that you will stir in our hearts now, that you show us what it is to be followers of you together in Kiraville in 2022. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Remember the first time I went to Thailand, we went to a temple and we walked, just to see what was happening, we walked in and there was all these, these gold pillars and there was people going, going forward and they were bowing down. There was incense there, and they're putting incense, and the smoke's all coming up. You maybe you've been to these temples, and there's prayer wheels, and they're spinning these prayer wheels. And as as we stood there, we're watching these people seriously and focused worshiping, and they're, they're doing these things to worship. And everyone worships things. Everyone worships. I see when we walked in today, I thought Dennis had some very good welcome for us all today with the flowers going down there. But no, if we look in there, there's an Indian festival and got got the little idol there in, at the entrance. People worship all different things. People focus on, live for, and chase after all different things. And in a month's time, there's going to be a gathering where a few billion people around the world are filled with all this excitement and anticipation. And they're going to be worshippers and celebrating. It's called the Football World Cup. It's going to come out. It's, it's, like, it's a lot of worshippers. A lot of worshippers is this. Like we, we don't want to worship the Geelong Cats. No, sorry, Brenda, we don't, we, don't, we don't want to worship them. People worship all different things. I remember talking to some students when we were in Indonesia. They came from Sumatra. And they, they talked about how some one of the parents had died. They started to explain the ceremony that they would do from that area. So what happens, someone would grow up in one area, say in life, they move away somewhere else. They die and then they're buried there. Many years later, they go and take the bones of that parent who died, take it back to their hometown. They have this big festival and ceremony. So for these students, they're feeling uncomfortable because at this time, they're meant to take part in ancestor worship. And if they weren't to be there, they'll bring shame on their parents. And so for them, they've got all these nerves about, what does my family think? Can I go and be part of this ceremony? Can I actually be there? Can I take part in this worship? And that's the challenge, isn't it? Will we worship? What do we worship? 
What are the things that we want to lean on? What do we decide to worship? Now, we're made to be worshippers. It's in the design of our being, isn't it? In, in who we are, we're made to live for God, aren't we? We're made to live for Him. And so we see this in the history of God's people. Israel, they're called out by God. They're chosen to be His. They're gathered as His people. They're made to be worshippers. And they're to worship Him alone. In Deuteronomy 5, 8 and 9, we remember this, Ten Commandments. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above, or on earth beneath, or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. So no images, no idols, no bowing down. They're God's people. To worship God alone, they're to be focused on God. And in the journey of God's people, looking at the time of Daniel, God's people were taken taken into exile to Babylon, taken away from their land in Jerusalem. And you know, in Daniel we see Daniel, we see Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego taken to the royal court and they learn the ways of the Babylonians. So here we see in this, this part of the story, this King Nebuchadnezzar, this powerful man, forces people to worship. Verse 27, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold 60 cubits high and 6 cubits wide and set it up in the plain of Jura in the province of Babylon. So that would be 27 metres high, so quite a high image this thing, 2.7 metres wide, it's a big statue, it's on a plane so you can see it from very far away. And then this was said, nations and peoples of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. So the king said, you have to do this. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn and the flute and the instruments, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. This is a call out. This is this powerful king wanting to gather all the people together. Now in this whole atmosphere, in the royal court and what's happening, there's jealousy around Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. They're not liked. And they don't follow in worshipping and bowing down. We know when Nebuchadnezzar hears about this, what's his response? He's furious. He's so angry oh, that these people would not fall down. And so we hear about the response in verse 18. They say, Your Majesty, so still with some respect there, we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Verse 18. King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know we will not serve your gods or bow down to the image that you have set up. So here they are, they have all this pressure. If they, if they follow in with everyone else, they're fine, but if they do not bow down and worship, they'll be killed and thrown into a furnace. Imagine the stressful moments of what they're going to do at this point. They say, we will not. We will not follow. And notice also their great trust in God. No, they follow the God who made the world. He created everything. The God of power and strength. And that, yeah, that, he, can, he can rescue us. Like with the first, he, they know he can rescue us if he wants. At this point, they don't know, they don't know if he will but they still stand. They stand up to King Nebuchadnezzar. And when everyone else bowed down, they did not join in. Look at Nebuchadnezzar's response. Verse 19, Nebuchadnezzar was furious. He ordered the furnace heated to be heated seven times hotter than the usual. Commanded their strongest soldiers to tie them up and to throw them in. Now this is, the furnace is a frightening killing tool. It's interesting, throughout history, many leaders have become experts in death, haven't they? Many leaders through history, experts in death. We know one who's an expert in giving life. Which is great. And the furnace is so hot, the men carrying them forward to throw them in, they're burned up and killed. Yeah, and that's it, and then they die. 
in the furnace and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they're dead and that's it. No, no, that's all, not what happens, is it? It does happen like that. So, oh, I was away here. False teacher, stop it, stop him. No, <laughs> that's not what happens. They don't die there, do they? Nebuchadnezzar uh, looks into the fire and is amazed. There's four men walking around, one like the son of the gods, and he calls out. Verse 27, they saw the fire and not harm their bodies. So they come out of this furnace, they're not harmed. No, and it just reinforces this many times. No hair on the head is singed. Their robes are not scorched. They don't even smell like smoke, even though they've been in a furnace. It shows the King Nebuchadnezzar doesn't control who lives and dies, but we know God controls who lives and who dies. The fourth person in the fire could be an angel, it could be Jesus himself, but we know what they're there to do. They're to protect these men in the fire. And this is not expected, is it? You don't go into a fiery furnace that has killed other people and come out alive, but they do, because the God of power and might, the God they trusted, He has rescued them. That's one great miracle in this passage. There's another miracle that happens in this passage. Verse 28, it's the way that Nebuchadnezzar responds. He says, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Who have a foreign king who doesn't follow God, who follows all these other gods, he's, he says, praise be to that God. It would be like, you know, Modi, the president of India, experiencing something and go, praise, praise God. You know, pray, this, is, it would have, this is a miracle, isn't it? Like that could happen though, couldn't it? God could do that. God could do that. And this is, this is amazing. It's out of this world. Like He calls out for protection onto God's people, doesn't he? And it's, it's a miracle. God turned the heart of Nebuchadnezzar to a moment of praise. A moment of praise to God. And God works all the way through history to stir people's hearts to praise. And we praise God because Jesus has gone into the fire of judgment. Jesus went into the fire of judgment to die for his people. And that stirs up praise. Enough. We have so many songs about that idea, don't we? Jesus coming, Jesus laying down his life, and it stirs our praise up and it reveals and who God is. It turns our hearts to worship. See, we praise the God who saved Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It stirs our praise in our hearts. And we praise Jesus who went into the fire of judgment, who died and was raised to life. Now what a story this is. Sentenced to certain death by fire, yeah, but rescued. This story is famous because it is a story of hope. The people back then, they're going through this time where they're in exile, there is great trouble for them. Their lives are difficult, they're out of their land going through all these hardships. So the message to them is, Put your hope in your powerful God. Put your hope in God who can do what this powerful king cannot do. Put your hope in him. And the message is, stay with God. You know, in exile, when you're under press pressure, trust him. Trust your God. Now, we receive the same message. Put your hope in God. Trust in him. Now, back then, they experience pressure to worship an image. We have different pressures now, different pressures in Australia, but the challenge is the same, stand firm. Now you would have seen this man in the news recently, Andrew Thorburn, the CEO, CEO of Essendon. He was appointed to be the leader and director of that whole football club. And then an old sermon from his church went public, which talked about marriage and sexuality. The club said that these values are not the same as the clubs, and the club demanded you need to be choose, you have to choose between being the director of your church or being the director of this football club. So all on the news reads, the floods came and sort of took this out of the news a bit, didn't it? But uh, yeah, he had this choice, and it's a costly choice. He could lose money, he loses reputation. So what does he choose? 
he chooses to step down and he chooses to stay the director of his church. And he stands firm. He's like, yeah, I follow God. I follow these ways and he stands firm. The challenge for us is, will we stand as God's people? When the world is flowing all in one direction, everyone's going this way, they're all thinking this way, they're all making lots of noise about certain things, will we just go along with them? Or will we stand as God's people? In a world that wants to make Jesus smaller than he is, always wants to make his, oh, he's just a nice teacher, make him smaller. Stand for the uniqueness of Jesus, that he is the Lord, that he's the only way to be sent, to be saved. Let, let's stand. In a world where bitterness and bias can rule, when you know revenge and things that are upheld, let's stand for forgiveness. Let's stand for new starts. And in a world that tells us, you know, don't give your time, don't give your money away, keep it yourself. Don't give your time running out, keep it to yourself. No, let's stand for loving sacrifice. In a world that where people are on, you know, the going with the flow, it's you know, store up earthly treasures to get as many things as you can, you know, we get this call stand for generosity for eternal treasures. This is the call from Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. And we want to take inspiration from these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, make a stand. Make a stand in your community, in your family, in your workplace as we follow after Jesus. And when everyone around you is doing something that is against what God wants, you know, when they're turning away in disobedience, when it is sin, when the community supports, you know, having affairs and tax evasion and overuse of alcohol and gossip, friends, let's stand. Let's stand as God's people in our hearts and say, no, I follow Jesus. I don't walk in those ways. I walk in the ways of my Lord. Stand like these three men. Verse 28, they trusted in God and defied the king's command and are willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any God except their own God. Let's stand. In a few weeks, there are a number of students returning home to their different countries, some, some of them to Japan. It's interesting seeing like, the way God has worked in some of their lives, particularly one of, one of them seeing like she's just you know, seeking after Jesus, she's trusted in Jesus. The challenge for her will be when she gets home, will she keep worshipping Jesus or will she go back and just worship what everyone worships in Japan? Will she just fall back in line with those things? So I encourage you to pray for students, whether it's this year or in a few years, that, that they will stand as God's people and keep going and keep persevering and worshipping Jesus. Now this is not just a challenge for students going back to their own countries, it's a challenge for us as we engage in our communities. If we go back to our old life, we can worship what everyone else worships, or we can live a different life as God's people. And we all have this challenge, you know, worship God or go with the flow, worship various things, you know. What do, what do people worship? Can I just throw it out to all of you? What kind of things? The God of money? What other things do people worship? God of fame? Yes. What's appearances. Fun? Appearances. Fame, appearance, definitely. Possessions. Possessions, things like that. Environment. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a popular one. Happiness. Happiness, definitely. Status. Status, yeah. And cells. True. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so we have, you know, like God of the environment, mm -hmm. God of status, God of, you know, fame. They're very poor short term idols to worship, aren't they? They're not gonna last. You know, one once I had hair, but now I don't even <laughs> so, no, no use worshiping my my stuff. <laughs> short, very short term objects of worship but all these things you know whether it's environment uh, you know entertainment possessions they're not bad in themselves are they they're not bad by themselves they're, they can be good 
The problem is when we reach for those things instead of God, when we depend on those things instead of depending on our God who saved us. That's, that's when it all goes wrong, isn't it? And in this passage, we have this call to right worship. You know, the God who rescues from the flames, the God who raised Jesus to life, he is totally worthy of your worship and praise. Both in what you speak out and sing out and the life of holiness, he is worthy of praise and honour. You know, every day when we get together here also. And I started off talking about worship. We worship all different things. The question is, what will we decide to worship? And where will we stand when everyone goes in a certain direction? We see in this passage, they're threatened with death, threatened to be thrown in a fire, and they're ready to stand firm. God delivered them. He won't always deliver us, but he did deliver them. This is a message of hope for people in exile, and it's an encouragement for us now to hold fast. And in response, I just want to encourage you, we looked at two topics here <clears throat> in application. One, stand, and the other one, worship, worshiping God alone. Let's encourage you this week to take some time to pray. Is, is there one of these things that you want to think more about? Let's spend some time praying through that topic, maybe talking to someone, asking them to pray for you. We want to hear God's word and like live it, don't we? So if God's put on your heart, okay, yeah, I know I need to stand for this thing. Or I know I want to invest more in, in my worship of God. Let's uh, stand as his people. Let's worship God alone. Well, I want to finish with this. Tomorrow you are going to wake up and you are going to wake up as a worshipper. You're going to wake up. You're a worshipper. We're all worshippers, aren't we? So when you wake up, I encourage you, fuel the fire of God worship. Do the things that are going to stir your heart to worship God and praise Him and live for Him, your Lord and Saviour. And you know, as we live these lives, as we serve Him, let's, let's invite other people to be worshippers of this one true God. Let's invite others to be part of that. Let's seek Him and gaze upon Jesus and just flow out in song and praise and worship and service in our lives. Fuel the fire of God worship. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the example of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We thank that they stood firm. We thank that in this, in this story we see your power, God, your power to strengthen and deliver your people. So, Lord, strengthen us to depend on you and live our lives in, in all our worship of you. Lord, strengthen us to be single minded in our worship of you, Lord. And God, forgive us when we drift follow after other things and put them above you, Lord. Strengthen us to reorder these things, Lord. And strengthen us each day to fuel this fire, Lord. Stir in our hearts. Praise to you as we stand firm as your people. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, dear Jason, for your stirring and encouraging sermon. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the opportunity to pray for us all today. We give thanks, Lord, we can all meet together today. Lord, we are thankful for Jason preaching to us today from the book of Daniel. We pray for our church family those who are here today and others known to us who are unable to worship with us this morning. May you watch over us all in our daily lives and as we go forward in it, be a comfort and a guide in our lives. Lord, please give us strength and courage and keep us all safe at all times in this changing world. We pray for our new minister, Peter Hutchinson, and his wife, Anna, and their children. And we also pray for Jason and Paula and their children. Lord, may they walk with you in all they do. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful sermons they prepare for us to hear. 
we give thanks for their teaching. Dear Lord, we pray for those people who are part of our church service roster each week. Thank, for their, thank you for their willingness to serve you at both our 9am and 5pm services. And thank you Megan Whittington for all her work in organising this roster. We bring before you, Lord, our wardens, parish council members and staff. Guide them in all their wise decision making for our church. Lord, I pray we will find the right person in the coming weeks to fill the position of your children's worker here at St John's. We are thankful, Lord, for your friendship service and the many congregation members who come along each month. We give thanks for the service and for the time of fellowship shared over lunch. May others be encouraged to come along and join in with us. We pray also for the Mother's Union members, those who are active and those who are now unable to attend the meetings due to health matters or difficulty in moving around. May the MU members continue to support family members of our church who may have a special need. Our new hall building is progressing, for which we give thanks. Thank you for the good weather over the past week, enabling the work, building work to go ahead. We look to the future, Lord, when we can invite people along and make them welcome in the days ahead. We pray our church will grow and we will encourage others to come along and join with us as we worship you, Lord. We give thanks for our Kirrival community here at the foot of Mount Kira. Also, we give thanks for the beautiful botanical gardens where we can go for a stroll and see all of God's creation. There are so many opportunities here where we live. Thank you, Lord, for the men's coffee morning held each week at White Rabbit. The numbers are growing, which is great. And we have men coming along from other churches to green, join in with us as we solve the problems of the world. <laughs> we pray for our world, Lord. We pray for peace in this changing world. Guide our brother and sister in Christ, John and Catherine Hugh, as they both settled in having arrived in the past few days in Korea, ready to teach and help others, Lord. Please keep them safe at all times. We, are, we pray for those who are unwell, the elderly in our church, our prayer diary is working well. Thank you, Virginia. It is an opportunity to think of others and not focus on ourselves. Pray for those who are caring for others at this time. May the Lord be with them all. Be with us today, Lord, as we enjoy this day which you have made. May we be thankful for all for you have done for us in our lives. May we praise your name forever. Uh, and please, amen, please give any prayer requests to Virginia at the end of the service. Now we might all get together and say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
closing blessing today from Thessalonians, which is obviously the letter that Paul wrote to the church in Thessalonica. And I didn't know what Jason was going to say today, but I think um, God had his hand on this closing blessing. So this is from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. But we ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord, because God chose you as first fruits to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. He called you to this through our gospel, that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word.